My name is Avery Denny. My clan, I work here at the Net Institute and I'm making this video as a Navajo traditional practitioner chanter Hathali. I know there are many questions that are unanswered concerning Navajo traditional ceremony during the time of this pandemic. We call it the Kosnsagi COVID-19. Given that name, and um, I know there are many questions throughout Navajo land among our people and a lot of um, people are asking questions, what about the Navajos, traditional, how about the Navajo medicine man, what are they doing? How are they contributing to help this pandemic relief answers? What do we do? Those are questions. And then there's a lot of blame going around too that we are not doing enough. And questions about our organization, the Ne Medicine Men Association, the Ne Hathali Association, what are they doing? So I would like to try to answer some of those questions to you. Number one, we're going to make this a series of presentation. As we go through these series, we'll be talking about the pandemic year 2020-20. Awareness in the Navajo traditional ceremonies. Nahara. Do we still carry on the Navajo ceremonies? What is the limitations of our ceremony? How many people can be there? Is it still possible? So those those questions we will try to answer. The next one is there's gonna be a unit topic called title. Introduction to Navajo Holistic Healing. The Ne Benahara Bohoa Benatikip. There's going to be a definition of what that is. Our Navajo ceremony or the healing ceremony. And they focus just mainly on healing. We treat the symptom of. For example, grief and using Navajo traditional healing ceremony. There is a diagnosis that can be made by the Navajo traditional diagnostic ways. And one of the concerns is COVID-19 awareness. Where is this? What is it? Is it alive? Is it moving around? Does it have a body? So what is, where is the origin of this COVID-19? So diagnosis through that ceremony. What is it? And we'll be answering questions about ceremonial preparation. So step by steps. So in this series, we will try to answer some of the questions that our people have concern about and I know that a lot of a lot of people especially in border town and cities and a lot of the, the, the people they have 
communicated that the Navajos bring that COVID-19. So we have to be careful about that. We as Navajo, we have a clan. If you have your mother's clan, you are Navajo. You are Navajo. We shouldn't contradict ourselves. We shouldn't talk about our ways, traditional ways, and labeling it as taboo and superstition. It's not the way to do it. We have to come back together as a nation. We got to see our lifestyle, our life way, our traditional ways. There are a lot of protocol. There are a lot of awareness. There's a lot of wellness teacher. There is a lot of welding teaching that go along with our traditional ways. And we haven't even gone back to those practices. And a lot of things that we see and hear today, like wash your hand, take care of yourself. People are saying that like, it's like new, but in the traditional way, in the old ancient ways of our forefathers, they always say, wash your hand, take care of yourself, clean yourself, go do a sweat ceremony, clean yourself, clean, change your clothes, take care of yourself. And all of these things, drink water, like that. Don't go to these places. Don't take those things. Don't take it. Those are bad things. It's not good for your health. Stay away from that. That's not yours. That's not your belief. You're not supposed to drink that. You're not supposed to eat that. Those are taboo. It can cause sickness to you. You don't try, you don't go follow other people's ways. Um, human philosophy. Don't follow that. Don't just eat Stay with the spirituality, natural teaching, the taboo of contagion, the taboo of uh, attraction. Don't just eat It's going to hurt you. You're going to be exposed to something like that. It's dangerous for your health. These are all old saying. These are all old teachings that we carry on. It's like an epic story. It's going to be alive 100 years from now. We carry on. There is a wellness spirit, a wellness philosophy, a wellness teaching, prevention, protocol, and a lot of these things. And if you are exposed to anything like that by breaking your own laws, traditional laws, you're going to be affected by it. So there is a healing process in place here. See, look, it's going to provide wellness to you. These are step-by-step -step procedures, how to go about treatment in the, in the ceremonial, traditional ways. And through this series that we're going to provide to you, we're going to talk about these different steps and different procedures. And there's going to be language that we're going to use, the diagnostic language, therapeutic language, even talk about some of the songs that's utilized, some of the prayers that could be utilized. There's going to be education like that, awareness, and the things that we're going to cover in these series is going to be like that. This COVID-19 is alive. Well, it's really close to our home. We have to provide awareness about it and how to take care of it, how to take care of our body through the Navajo traditional aspect, the, the, the natural um, divine that's out there, different herbs and plants and ceremony how to use the prayer, how to talk to nature, and all of these things like that. And of course, using the Navajo language as the power of healing, the power of knowledge, and to carry on some of these values, tradition, 
and we're going to share that through these different series that we go through. And um, we're going to provide a history, the origin of our people, where they come from, what history can provide for us or to us. Going back, there are these different epidemic, different stages of what we come through and a lot of things that historically or historical trauma that was one of our own traumas and migration, invasion, wars, school and other type of sickness that was brought to to the Navajo Nation, to Indian countries alone, how our diet changed, how our medicine changed, how our mind is changed, how we are dominated, how we are assimilated, acculturated through other mainstream ways and the loss of our mind, the loss of our language, how we begin, how we are exposed to some of these things and see where we are at today. So that's the way over there, like in the rural area, way out there, away from the main highways, the dirt road, even way back in the mountains in the hill, where there's a Navajo Hogan there. And a lot of these Navajos, they live that lifestyle still, and they still survive. They still live. And some of these traditional people out there, they outlive their own children, outlive their own grandchildren. They live to be 106 years old still yet. And they have a lifestyle. They have a teaching how to live. They set the bar up here. So talk about some of these things, how it is possible to survive. So in these series, we're going to um, provide education. So this is one of the first introduction to our series through the NET Institute. And I hope you come and join us for the second series, the third and the fourth series like that. So there's going to be different topic that we're going to provide for you and um, questions that are most likely ask is what are the Navajo traditional ceremonial people doing? We did the diagnosis. What is COVID-19? How does it move? How does it go? What is the treatment? And what is the, the preparation? What do we need to be aware of? Yes, there's science, but then in the traditional frame of mind, in the traditional ways too, we have to maintain that and come together with modern science and native science like that and try to work with it together. So that's, how, that's what I'm going to say at this time. So I hope you all join us as we provide answers and like to say thank you very much.